Father, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory, Lord, and we honor you and we just magnify your holy name, O oh God, your name that is above every name, God, your name that is a strong tower, Lord for the righteous to run to it and they are saved. Father God, we praise you and we bow low, God, that you may be exalted, oh God, that you may be high and lifted up, oh God. Father God, we just worship you this morning and we, we just thank you, God, for this privilege to be in your presence, God. Lord, I bow as dust and as ashes, oh God, before you are sovereign, God. A God who is high, and exalted, oh God. And Lord, I just pray that you'll humble me now and sanctify me afresh. God, with the blood of Jesus Christ, sanctify my lips, Lord. My God, that your word, oh God, will go forth without hindrance, oh God. That your word, oh God, will go forth with power, Lord. That the hearts of your people will truly be blessed. Father God, we praise you and we exalt you. And we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. The spoken word this morning is God is not looking for, to, for the put together, but he is looking for those who want to be put together. And I want to turn your attention to a couple of scriptures Psalm 53, two to three says that God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand. If there's any who understands, if there's any who seek. The word says every one of them has turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. And Romans 3, 10 to 12 attests the same thing. It says, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. And Isaiah 64, 6 says, But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquity, like the wind, have taken us away. And Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is the word of God. You know, it's, it's easy for us as human beings. You know, we have our own prejudices. If we come from a different background, if we came from a good home, if we had parents that were married, if whatever it is, human beings have their own little prejudices where we think at times that we're better than others, that we are a little bit higher than other people and you know we might have an education we might drive a nice car whatever it is there are things that we think because we can do it well that we're all that but as we read in the scripture just now that when God looks at all human beings no matter your background your financial standing, your educational standing. He says, we're not good. He doesn't see good. And why is that? Because when Adam and Eve fell, they changed everything. So no matter how we might feel that we're good, because of sin, we're not good. Because of sin, we are susceptible to do things that are not right in the sight of God. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, we no longer were good. The word of God tells us when they fell, they were hiding from God. Because we no longer could go freely 
in the presence of God. And God saw that and he, he wasn't happy because he said he couldn't stay that way. But as I was reading and studying this word, God was showing me, he was showing me that, you know, when you have a wound, and I don't know why it's medical because I everybody knows I'm an accountant, right? So I know nothing about the medical field. But when you have a wound, right? When you get a cut, what's the first thing we do when we get a cut? We try everything to get the cut taken care of, right? Why do we do that? Why when we get a cut, we clean it with peroxide and we get a band-aid and we do everything? Because what happens to a wound that's not attended to? It becomes infected. Right? And as it become infected, what happens to wounds that become infected? It turns into something called sepsis, right? Yes, I researched it because I didn't know all that about sepsis, right? Because I am not in the medical field, as I stated before. So sepsis, when I research sepsis, it says it's when you get an infection that is not treated, you, you, it, it becomes infected. And what happens, it contaminates your blood and it inflames your body. And what leads to sepsis that's untreated, you can have organ failure and die. Why are we talking about sepsis? Because you see, when sin came into man, we became infected. Just as how when you get a cut that is untreated, it becomes infected. And the thing is, there are so many of us that's walking around with this open wound that sin has done. And what do we have? We have a version of sepsis, but it's spiritual. You see, sepsis can kill you in like seven, I, I researched it. It's one of the most deadliest thing you can have. If you have a wound that's not treated, it kills you. Your organs shut down and you're no more. And God was showing me that when sin came into the world, everyone got infected by sin. This open wound that's there and it causes us to experience so many different things because all of us struggle. All of us struggle with different things that sin causes us to struggle with. We struggle with addictions. We struggle with pride. We struggle with anything you can think about that has kept you in a place where God doesn't have for you. It's because of sin. But I have good news this morning. I have good news this morning. Because you see the glorious thing about sin is the word of God said for God so love the world. God gave us a treatment for the sickness we had. We had a sickness that no human being could get cured from. From Adam to Moses, even with the children of Israel, the blood of animals, nothing could help humanity to get the healing it needed until Jesus Christ came on the scene. And we got the blood treatment. Yeah. So the same when you're sick and you'll get sepsis and you have to go on antibiotics and they have to do everything. It becomes an emergency situation. When Jesus Christ came and he went to the cross of Calvary, it was because we were in an emergent situation. You see, people don't realize that when we don't live for God, when we allow this sin to stay in us, that sin infects us and it keeps us in a place where we are in need of a cure. And we can't dress it up because you ever, I remember once when I was going to Westwood and I was in Jamaica and we had a girl in my class and she had an infection and she had a cut and she would hide it. So it needs, she kept it in the socks because you remember we have to wear socks and shoes and she kept it in the socks and after a while it started to smell. After a while we started to smell this odor in the car. We're like what is that? That is what happened when we allow sin to stay in us. When we have a wound that is in us that is untreated after a while it starts to smell. And if you don't get the treatment that is needed, that stench is going to 
take you over. And before you know, you have an infection and you're fighting for your life. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about your natural life here. We're talking about your eternal life. We're talking about that after all of this is done. And we stand before God. If we still have sin in us, there's no way we can enter the kingdom of God. Because God sent his son. We as children of God, saints, we have work to do. We cannot pretend that everything is good. You have to understand, we started with the psalm that when God looks at us, none of us is good because none of us is good. Brother Paul tells us in Romans 7 that we know that sin is in our bodies. That the things we want to do, those are not the things we do. We do the things that are evil. The things that we know we're not supposed to do, those are the things we draw to. So what does that mean? It means that we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to go to God honestly. And don't dress it up. Don't, don't put on a show. Because here's the thing. Your brothers and sisters might not know the things that you struggle with. Because we can dress it up. We can play the part. We can do all of it. But God knows. We have to be more concerned about God than man. Because man is in the same predicament we are in. God said when he looks at man, he don't see any man that's good. He said there is none that's righteous. He said there is none that does good. So you're trying to impress man who's in the same boat with you mm -hmm. and not even thinking about the God mm -hmm. of heaven and earth who the word of God said he knows every thought. Mm -hmm. Think about that. He knows every thought mm -hmm. before we think it. Every word before we utter it, God knows. Yeah. And we get caught up in playing this part. We play a part because we want to impress man. Mm -hmm. It's not about man. The word of God said, let him who glory, glory in God. Mm -hmm. It's about God. Because at the end of the day, when we stand before God, he is going to say, listen, you still have some wounds that weren't addressed. You still had some things that you didn't allow the blood of my son to rectify for you. You still have some things in you that you didn't allow my Holy Spirit to burn it out. God is not looking for those who don't need no help. But I'm here to tell you that we all need help. Because when God looks from heaven on earth, he said there is none that is good. So if we all think we're good, and we don't have no need of the physician, I'm here to tell you, check it again. Because in God's standards, you see, Pastor Vickers touched on it this morning. Because you see, Isaiah was a prophet of God. He was a man of God. He was a mouthpiece of God. God was using this man. So you would think that this man was all that and more. But you see, when Isaiah saw the Lord, the word of God said, when Isaiah saw the Lord, and he saw the train, only the train he saw, he didn't even see the face of God. All he saw was his train engulfed in the temple. And when he saw that, and then he saw the, the seraphims and the cherubims, and they cried, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, who was and is and is to come. And the word of God said the, 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 the temple doors were shaken. When he saw that, mm -hmm. come on. my God, come on. he said, woe is me. <laughs> you see, that's the thing. This is why God ain't looking for anyone that's put together. Because he knows there's none that is put together. Because when you stand before God, you realize who God is and who you are. This man of God, this prophet of God, when he came in the presence of God for real, he said, woe is me. I am done. He said, I am a man of unclean, a prophet of God. I want you to understand. 
He went, he was an ordinary man. He was a mouthpiece of God. But when he saw the God of heaven, he said, I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell among a people of unclean lips. He said, my eyes have seen the glory of God. He realized that I thought I was put together. I thought I was all that because God was using me. I thought I was all that because I was prophesying and I was doing all of this. But when I came in contact with God, I realized that I was nothing. You see, we have to understand. We have to understand the God that we are trying to serve. We have to understand that there is none that is God. None that is righteous. None that seeks. None understands. We outside of God are nothing. So this is why the word of God said we have to humble ourselves. You see pride causes us to prop ourselves up. That pride. Thinking we're, we're good and we're, we're nothing. We're holier than thou. We can recite scriptures. We can do. It is nonsense, saints of God. It is nonsense. Jesus Christ said, I didn't come for all of that. I came for those who are sick to make them well. Yeah. Why would Jesus say that we're sick? He said, those who are in need of physician. He said, that's who I came for. I didn't come for those who think that they're good. And that they've been going to church all their lives. And that they sing on the choir. And that they can recite every Bible verse. I didn't come for those who have the form of godliness. I'm here for those who want to be born again. Who want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Who want to be sanctified and transformed. That's who Jesus Christ came for. Because he for all this time from Adam. Man was sold under sin. We could not help ourselves. We could not help ourselves no matter how much we try. No matter how much we try. We fail repeatedly. Why? Because outside of Jesus Christ, we cannot make it. Outside of Jesus Christ, outside of the blood of Jesus Christ, we cannot make it. And God this morning is saying, He's not looking for those who are put together. He's not looking for those who think that they have made it. How can we think that we have made it when we're still on earth? How can we be relaxed and okay when we're still on earth? We are still in the clay container that is still susceptible to sin. We're still flesh and blood because we have not yet received or glorious body so how can we be at peace and comfortable god is not looking for that this morning mm -hmm. we read in revelation 3 about the lukewarm church god said you're not hot and you're not cool you're in the middle you're comfortable you're comfortable you're not on fire for god and you, you you're not cool so he can't warm you up and he can't cool you down he don't even know what you're trying to do. Because you're in a place where you're, you feel like you're okay. What a place to be in. It's a dangerous place. To be in a place where you think you're okay. The word of God said Jesus Christ is coming back for a passionate bride. I'm pretty sure that if you're lukewarm you ain't passionate. There's no passion there. But you look warm. We, 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 we don't have the passion for God. Because we think we're okay. We think that because we show up for Bible study. And we come to church. And we're just doing. We're following this motion. It's like it's, it's routine. It's routine. It's not power. It's not love. It's not a desire. It's just routine. Because this is what we've always done. This is who we are. This is what we're used to. I've been going to church from a child. And, but there's no power behind it. God said, come buy from me a robe that is refined in fire. God 
wants to save his people. That's the beautiful thing about God is that God at all times is looking for ways to change us, to save us. Because he wants us to live that abundant life while we're here on earth. But the enemy doesn't want us to live that, so he makes us feel okay in our sin. God understands. It's okay. That's the devil. God wants us to change. He wants us to admit when we need help. He said, I'm looking for those who want to be put back. He says that I'm going to use the word of God. If you go to Jeremiah 18, 1 to 6, when he told to Jeremiah, he said, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. And he said, When I went down to the potter's house, there, there he was making something at a wheel. And the vessel that, that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. That's how we are. Sin caused all of us to be marred. So no matter how we pretty up ourselves and put on nice clothes and the altar man looks great, God says we're marred. Because sin did that. Sin destroyed our spirit man and caused us to be less than who we are. But hear what God says. He said the, 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 the clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. Isn't that good news, saints of God? The word of God said he made it again into another vessel. That is God. He said you can be born again. That's what Jesus Christ has done for us. So we can have a second opportunity of rebirth. He said as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying. O house of Israel can I not do to you as this potter. Says the Lord. He said look at the clay in the potter's hand. So you are in my hand. O house of Israel. That is how we are in the hands of God. If we allow God to do the work. Because here's the thing. We might think that because we don't fornicate. And we don't commit adultery. And we don't murder. And we don't steal. That we're all good. But before God. It's more deeper than that. There are way more layers of things that God has to work on for us. There are so many things that God has to remove from us so that we can look like him. We read this morning with the young rich ruler and it is a famous scripture. The young rich ruler, man of authority, he was a ruler and he had money. But he has been going to temple from he was a child. And when he went to Jesus Christ. He said good teacher. What can I do to inherit eternal life? Now when you read a scripture. And Jesus said why do you call me good? See once again Jesus is letting everybody. Only God is good. He said you know the commandments. You should do this. Honor your mother. Do all this. And the young rich ruler propped up himself. Feeling all good. He said, I've done all of that. Jesus said, great. Sell everything you have. Give everything you have away to the poor. And pick up your cross and follow me. And the word of God said that. He could not do it. He could not do it. Because his money and his possession were his God. And those were more important to him than what Jesus was telling him to do. What is it that we have that we hold on to that we're not willing to give it all up for Jesus? I'm telling you that all of us know what we struggle with. All of us know that one thing that no matter how many times we try to put it up, put it down, Today we put it down and we said we're not going to do it again. A week from now, we pick it back up again. But God today is saying that we got to surrender it completely to him so that he can do that transformative work. We have to do this so we can do the work that God has called us to do. 
He said in his, in his word, he said, is there anything that's impossible for me? God can change who we are. He can change because that's what the blood of Jesus Christ is there to do. It is there to change everything that we think is impossible to change. It is to help us to put us in a place where we think we can't get there. The blood of Jesus Christ is able to do it. But God, as we read in Revelation 3, he's not going to force himself. Do you ever see a doctor forcing a patient to take treatment? Do you ever see if you're in pain and they're telling you you need to do this medication? Yeah, I'm not taking it. Guess what? You're going to stay in your pain. And it's the same thing. God, he said, behold, I stand on the door and I knock. He's knocking on the doors of our hearts. He's knocking. And it is for us to open up the door so God can do the work. The thing is, we want to experience the blessings and the goodness of God, but we don't want to change. We want to stay in the same position, but walk in the blessings of God. It doesn't work like that. When God called Abraham out of his family's house, he had to leave everything he knew. But he did it because God, he wanted to serve and live for this God. And that is what God is looking for, for his people. He doesn't want us to put on this show. It's nonsense to pretend and dress it up and to pretend that we know God and we're good. Nobody is good. That's what the word of God says. No one is good. Only God is good. But the good news is we have Jesus Christ. That is the good news. We have Jesus Christ who is able to change our situation. He is able to change who we are. God doesn't care about our background. He doesn't care if you look at God's track record. Murderers and prostitutes. He does not look at that. He ain't looking for people who have it all together because nobody has it all together. Everybody is in need of a savior. Everybody is in need of a Lord. Everybody is in need of transformation. And if you think you're not in need, you're in denial. You are in denial. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. Every day we wake up, we sin. In our thoughts, we sin. Everything we do. So we have to be open and honest. And ask God to help us. Ask God. Be real with God. Don't pretend that it's all good. Go to God openly and say, God, you see everything that I struggle with. You see, you know God. And I can't do it by myself. I want you to take over my heart. I want you to take over my life. I want to be taught by you. We have to do that, saints of God. Because if we continue to pretend, we're going to pretend until Jesus Christ returns. And what's going to happen is that the trump of God is going to sound and the dead in Christ is going to rise and those who have been waiting for God are going to be taken out and we're going to be here looking around like, what happened? How did I miss it? Because we didn't give God the opportunity to put us together. God wants to put his people together so that we can live above that life. Aren't you tired of the enemy killing and stealing and destroying your destiny? Aren't you tired of that? Aren't you tired of living as a victim when God has given us the victory through Jesus Christ? But it's up to us. God isn't going to jump on you and say, come on, man, you need to do this. He will not do it. He's going to give you opportunities. And what are the opportunities? The messages. All the, the messages that you get from God. Those are opportunities for us to seek God. For God to do the soul searching. Because God wants to save. God wants to redeem. And we have the opportunity now. 
Don't be like the young rich ruler who can't think. You think when we come before Jesus, he's going to tell you, oh, you're doing a good job. Mm -mm. That is not what it is. That's not what it's for. When you come in the presence of God, it is for us to be changed. It is for us to be made well because we have a sickness. But it's not for us to stay in the sickness and camouflage it. It's for us to let the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to do the work. It's for when the servant of God said, if anyone in here is suffering with this, 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 we run to the altar. We can't worry about what people think. Because this is about your soul. I get it. You know, we might feel prideful and we don't want anybody to know we're struggling. But who cares? Who cares? This is your soul. It ain't nothing to do with the flesh. So when God, when that young rich ruler saw Jesus and said, Look man, yes, that's good that you say you're doing all of that. But that's not the issue. You got a bigger problem. This is the problem and I can help you with that problem. I can help you with that. Yes. But he became sorrowful. Isn't that sad? When God zones in on us. And he reveals what our problems are. And instead of us falling on our faces. And repenting and asking God for mercy. And to help us overcome it. We walk away sorrowful. We get in our feelings. We, we, we think that. Well God didn't tell me that. Saints of God, God wants to use his people. Jesus Christ didn't die for us to just be living this mediocre life of nothingness. It's nothingness because we cannot live and achieve what God wants to do for us without him doing the refining work. He's not going to put new wine in old wineskin. He's not going to pour out upon us if we don't want him to change us. You want to walk in power? You want to walk in authority? You want to be this fuck? You have to surrender to God so that he can do the work. You have to ask God to do the work so that you can live the life he sent us here to accomplish. It is a dangerous thing for people of God to just be sailing on. Just sailing day in day out just having the devil rock us to sleep in a routine the same thing over and over and over again and no change it's time for us to change it's time for us to seek god with our everything because god wants to change us god wants to if he didn't want to he would not send jesus christ he wants us to have a victorious life you see, we have time now. The thief on the cross, because God showed me, he said there were two thieves on the cross. Two of them. To show you how sin can make us stupid. Two of them on the cross. And one of them blaspheming Jesus. Look man, save yourself and save. You're, you're a condemned thief. And you're before the king of kings. And instead of asking for mercy. No, I shouldn't be here. Doesn't that happen sometimes when we think we're so into what we did. We think we're entitled. Entitlement will kill us. He is in front of Jesus Christ. And he's saying, save yourself and save us. The other thief was like, aren't you even afraid that we are in the same judgment as this innocent man? He said, remember me, Lord. You see, a contrite heart and spirit, God will never deny. When we can openly go to God from a place of repentance, sometimes we think we're too far past repentance. Oh, I don't have anything to repent for. Really? Because we're looking through our eyes. Pride makes us blind to see the issues that we struggle with. Pride makes us opinionated and makes us think that things should go the way it should, this way. But God has nothing. He says he doesn't associate with the proud. He gives grace to the humble. 
So that other thief who recognize that this is serious if this holy man that I've heard about is in the same judgment and he's innocent, what's going to happen to me? And he said, remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's what God is saying us to us today. That whatever it is that we're struggling with, be honest and ask God to help us. Be honest. Don't dress it up. Don't, don't, because you don't know when Jesus Christ is going to make his return. You don't know if it's the next second. You don't know when it is. So now is the time for us to seek God so that he can do the work. So that he can change us. Because God wants to change us. He's not looking for the put together. And there is no put together. So put that out of your mind. No human being is put together. So just so we get it. If you didn't get it. There is no one that is put together. All of us are sinners. All of us struggle. All of us are in need of a savior. All of us is need in change. The word of God said. He who begun a good work in us will accomplish it. Until the coming of Jesus Christ. So that means until Jesus comes, we're going to be refined every single day. Every single day you're going to be getting refined. God is going to be taking the things out of you. Because he's coming for a spotless bride. Spotless and blameless. That's what the word of God says. So if when we come in, it's a one and done. There would be no need for Jesus if it was just a one and done. There would be no need for the Holy Spirit to be here if all Jesus Christ needed to do was say it was finished and go back to, to heaven and we accept salvation and we just say if it was a one and done. But it is not. It is a process. It is a daily dying. It is allowing the Spirit of God to do the work. It's being real. Not dressing it up. When we dress it up, we lose out. Yeah. When we pretend mm -hmm. that we're... And the thing is, sometimes we don't know. Because the enemy plays that trick to let you feel that you're okay. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. They don't get it. I remember when I went through this period when I was obsessed with some Asian movies. And I'm, I'm going to tell you because it's I'm not going to hide it. I watched one episode. The, one, the first time I watched it, I watched maybe 15 episodes. Because the episodes are like 80. They're a lot. And I kid you not, you see the first time I watched that episode, I went to bed. And that night, I dreamt past the curse. I was in the sanctuary. Because I was watching it on my phone. And I kid you not, I was at the back of the sanctuary in my dream. And she came like a... Um, like this lion, and she licked the phone out of my hands. And I said to her in my dream, why are you licking my phone out of my hand? Minister Ron has his phone, and you're not touching his phone. That's what I said to her. That's what I said in my dream. And she looked at me, and she said, that has nothing to do with you. But I'm sharing this because six months later, I'm under bondage. Because God saw that the enemy was going to use that to distract me. And the minute it happened, he sent a warning. And I ignored that warning. And I had to fight for six months to break that stronghold. And it seems simple, right? It was just a little show. But anything that is occupying your time. That you're spending timeless and countless hours. They consume you. And it's not bringing glory to God. It's a problem. And God saw the path I was going to go down. And this didn't happen 10 years ago. This was in 2020. So let's get it real. I want to show you that on this journey, we're going to have things that we're going to come up against. And we can't dress it up because the devil will kill us in it. And I'm telling you that I struggled to get rid of that stronghold. If I was just obedient when God showed me in the vision, when the servant, I mean, 
for me to tell, I've never seen Pastor Vickers like that in the natural, like a lion. She ripped the, and I was so scared. And I was like, but Ron is on his phone. And I woke up and I knew what God was saying to me. And guess what I did? Found excuses why it was still okay for me to watch mm -hmm. it. I found an excuse. I justified mm -hmm. why it was okay for me to waste timeless hours, my eye gate, wasting on things that don't glorify God. The enemy tried to use that to destroy me. Mm -hmm. You understand? And God mm -hmm. delivered me from it because I cried out to God and asked him, I said, God, I need your help. I'm struggling. And God delivered me. And last year, the devil tried again to bring it back. But God, I brought every thought under captivity. So I share this with your saints of God so you understand that on this walk, we are going to have struggles. The enemy isn't going to just let you accept Jesus Christ and let you walk into the sunset. It doesn't work like that. He is going to use subtle things to try to keep you. And if you don't identify it and admit you have a problem. If you, you see, the thing is, I didn't tell Pastor Vickers I was struggling. I didn't. My husband knew and my children knew because they live with me. And they saw the struggles that I was going through. But she knew because the spirit of God identified. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you. That even if you don't admit it, the spirit of God bears evidence when we're not walking and doing the things that God wants us to do. The, the spirit bears evidence. And when I got delivered, because I prayed and I fasted and I sought God, and God broke that stronghold, because the devil, you see, you have to understand, the devil don't have any authority to keep any child of God. Because Jesus Christ gives us the victory. We allow him to keep us. You see, when I got delivered and I called her and I said, Pastor Vickers, I was struggling and I was going through. And she said, ah, sister. That's what she said. She said, ah, sister Megan. I knew it. I knew it because my spirit was wrestling with your spirit. You see, that's the thing. When you are not operating and surrender to God so that God can do the work, the spirit of God bears evidence. Not because the servant don't say it. The spirit of yeah. God yeah. bears evidence. She said, Sister Megan, you're not telling me what I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know something was going on. Mm -hmm. But I give God thanks oh, that God said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. And he said, there's no temptation that he will allow to overtake you because with every temptation, yeah. he makes a way yeah. of escape. But we have to be able to identify when the enemy is trying to use things to shackle us. We're all broken people. We're all broken. We're all sinful human beings. We are not put together. We're broken. We struggled. Some of us bound on the generation of curses and things that we, we can't help ourselves. Family lines we're born into. It's not us that did it. This is how we came. But the blood of Jesus Christ is able to change that. All generational curses are under the blood of Jesus Christ. We have to receive what God has given us. We have to be resolute. It is okay. I am not ashamed of anything that God has delivered me from because the word of God said there is no condemnation. Amen. I have been redeemed. I have been sanctified so I can talk about what the devil tried to do. Mm -hmm. Now if I had dressed it up, I'm telling you, and pretended that it was okay and kept using the same excuse. It's this is that. I had every excuse on the earth. Mm -hmm. But there was something in me that was talking on me to let me know. This is not, this not right. You can't waste hours. Hours. I'm talking about they had like 70, 80 episodes. So how much hours is that? I mean, watch probably 15 of them. How much hours is that? Wasted time that I cannot get back. But I thank God that he said, when 
you come with a contrite heart and spirit and you repent. He said, as far as the east is from the west. Yeah. That is how far God removes our sins. And he remembers it no more. So I've been, vict I've been victorious. And I know how the enemy operates. So children of God, we have to have a willing heart to do what God wants us to do. Because we have a willing enemy who wants to prevent us from doing what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. 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 God is a good God. God is a faithful God. And all he wants to do is save his people. All God wants to do is to save his people. So that we can live a life of victory. That we can live a life of power. That we can live the life that Jesus Christ came for us to live. But we have to be an active participant in our salvation. Everyone that Jesus Christ healed or saved out of something, he always asks them, what do you want me to do for you? How do you want me to change this? And they had to open up their mouths and tell Jesus. And the thing is, Jesus knew all their situations. But God wants us to be an active participant of our salvation. Yeah. Yeah. What is it that you want me to do for you? Yeah. Blind Bartimaeus said, God, Jesus knew he was blind. He said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, that I may regain my sight. When the woman was caught in adultery, when Jesus didn't condemn her, he said, I don't condemn you. But what did he say to her? He said, go your way and sin no more. That's the thing. There has to be progress. There has to be change. God isn't condemning us. He's not casting us away because he loves us. But once we come into his fold, he's expecting that we're all going to change. We're all going to accept his saving grace. We're going to be transformed. Because here's the thing, sick people can't help anybody. If we all come in sick and stay sick, how can we run with the mandate? How can we make disciples out of all men? So now is the absolute time for us to come to God in the right way so that he can do the work, so that we can go out and be the light in this darkened world. And I'm going to use Psalm 24, 3 to 5 and Romans 11 to close. The word of God says in, in Psalms 24, 3 to 5. It says, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has a clean hands and pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. It says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Lift up the doors to your hearts. That's what God is saying. Lift up the doors to your hearts. And I will come in. The king of glory. Think about what the word just says. The king of glory. The God who created us. The one who is high and exalted. He's saying lift up you gates. Lift them up. Let me in. Give me the opportunity to come into your hearts. Because if you give me that opportunity. I will come in. Behold I stand on the door and I knock. And if anyone hears me and open up. I will come in and die. Imagine a mighty God asking 
his creation. Because he can come in. He can come in because he's God. If he wanted to tear it down, he could do it because he is God. But he gave us a free will. And he's not going to, he doesn't want robots. God is not looking for robots. He's looking for a people to be willing to open up the gates of their hearts so that the king of glory can come in. Because you see, if the king of glory takes up residence of your heart, when the devil tries to come, he's going to see that it's already occupied. He's going to see that your heart, the house, is already occupied. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong almighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your gates, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. God is looking to come in. Will you open up the doors of your heart today and receive our God? Romans 11, 33 to 36 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you. Heavenly Father, we worship you and we exalt you, O oh God. Father God, come in to our hearts, O oh God. Consume us, Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit, God. Lord, we are open books before you. We are naked before you. There is nothing hidden before you, God. So, Lord, we're just asking for you to do what only you can do. Wash us and redeem us and sanctify us and refine us, my God. Let your Holy Spirit, God, do the work that we cannot do. We submit, God, to your authority, Lord, so that we can walk where you have chosen us to walk. Father God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Let your word go forth with power. Let it go forth with authority that the hearts of your people will be truly blessed. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.